Hello and welcome to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase. Data as Code is the theme. This is season two, episode two of the ongoing series covering the exciting startups from the AWS ecosystem. And we talk about data analytics. I'm your host, John Furrier of theCUBE. And we have Javier De La Torre, who's the founder and chief strategy officer of Carto, which is doing some amazing innovation around geographic information systems or GIS. Javier, welcome to theCUBE for this showcase. Thank you, thank you for having me. So, you know, one of the things that you guys are bringing to the table is spatial analytics, data that now moves into spatial relations, which is, you know, we know about geofencing, you're seeing more data coming from satellites, ground stations, you name it, things are coming um, into the market from a data perspective, that's across mm -hmm. the board. And geo is one of them, geo, uh, GIS systems. This is what you guys are doing, the rise of SQL in particular with spatial. This is a huge new benefit to the world. Can you take a minute to explain what Carto is doing and what spatial SQL is? Sure. Yeah, so like you said, like data, obviously we know is growing very fast and is you know, now being leveraged by many organizations in many different ways. But there's one part of data we call one dimension that is location. We like to say that everything, everything happens uh, somewhere. So therefore everything can be analyzed and understood based on the location. So we, we like to put an example, if, if all your neighbors um, get an alarm in their homes, the likelihood that you will get an alarm increases, right? So that's obvious. We are all affected by our surroundings. What is spatial analytics, this type of analytics does, is try to uncover those spatial relations so that you can model, you can predict where something is going to happen or, you know, like, or optimize it, you know, like uh, where else you want it to happen, right? So that's that's at the core of it. Now, this is something that as an industry has been done for many years, uh, like the GIS or geographic information systems have existed for a long time. But now, and this is what Carter really brings to the table, we're looking at really democratizing it so that it's in the hands of any analyst, not, our vision is that you don't need to go five years to, uh, to a geography uh, school to be able to do this type of a spatial analysis. And the way that we want to make that happen is what we call with the rise of a spatial SQL. We add these capabilities around spatial analytics based on a language that is very, very popular for analysts, which is SQL. So what we do is enables you to do this spatial analysis on top of the well-known and well-used SQL analytics. It's interesting, the cloud native and the cloud scale wave um, and now data as code has shown that the old school, the old guard, the old way of doing things, you mentioned data warehousing, okay, as one, mm -hmm. BI tools in particular have always been limited. And the scope mm -hmm. of the limitation was the environment was different. You have to have yeah. domain expertise, rich knowledge of the syntax. Usually it's for an application developer, not for like real time and building it into the CICD pipeline or just from a workflow standpoint, making it yeah. available, the so-called democratization. Yeah. This is where this connects. And so I got to ask you, what are you most excited about in the innovations at Carto? Can you share some of the things that people might know about or might not know about that's happening at Carto that's, that takes advantage of this cloud native wave because companies are now on this bandwagon. Yeah, no, it, it is, and, and cloud native analytics is probably the most disruptive uh, kind of like trend that we've seen over the over the few years. In our particular space on a spatial, it has tremendous effects on 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 the way that we the, that we provide our service. So we, I like to kind of like highlight four main reasons why cloud analytics uh, uh, cloud native is super important to us. So the first one is obviously is scalability. The working, you know, with the with the sizes of data that we work now in terms of location um, was just not possible before. So for someone that is performing now analysis on autonomous car, or you're like that has any kind of sensorized GPS on a device and is collecting billions, uh, hundreds of billions of points. If you want to do analysis on that type of data, cloud native allows you to do that in a scalable way. But it also is very cost effective. That is very something that you know you you see very quickly when you when your data grows a lot, which is that this computing and storage separation, the idea that is store your data at cloud prices, but then use them with these data warehouses that we were describing, makes for a very very cost effective solution. But then you know there is uh, other two, obviously one of them being uh, SQL and the spatial SQL that you know like means 
We like to say that SQL is becoming the lingua franca for analytics. So it's used by many products that you can connect uh, through the usage of SQL. Um, but I think you're like, you're coming towards, you know, why, why I think it's even more interesting. It's like in the cloud, the concept like we, we all are sharing the, we are all living in the same infrastructure enables us that we can distribute spatial data sets to a customer that they can join it on their database on SQL without having to move the data from one another. Like in the case of Redshift on Amazon Redshift, the car to connects and using something called a spectrum, we can connect live to data that is stored on S3. And that is, I think that is going to disrupt a lot the way that we think about data distributions and how cost effective it is. I think you know, it has a lot of uh, uh, a lot of your know, like um, uh, potential on it, and in that sense, what Carto is providing on top of it in the format of formats like Parquet, which is a very popular uh, big data format, we're adding Geo Parquet. We are specializing this big data technology for doing a spatial analysis, and that to me, it is it is uh, it is very exciting because it's putting some of the best tools at the hands of doing a spatial analytics for something that you know we were not able to do before. So to me, this is one area that I'm I'm very, very excited about. And that's, I want to back up for a second. So you mentioned Parquet and, um, and the standards around that format. And also you mentioned Redshift. So let me get this right. So you're saying that you can connect into Redshift. So I'm a customer and I have Redshift. I'm using, I got my S3, I'm using Redshift for analytics. You're saying you can plug right into Redshift. Yes, and this is a very, very, very important part because why what Carto does is leverage Redshift computing infrastructure to essentially kind of like um, do all the analysis. So what we do is we bring a spatial analysis where the data is, where Redshift is, versus in the past, what we will do is take the data where the analysis was. And that change is at the core of cloud native. Okay, this is really where I see the exciting shift where data as code now becomes a reality is that you bring the, you're, it's a redefined architecture, it's a, the, the script is flipped. The architecture has been redefined. You're making the data move to the environments it needs to move when it has to. If it doesn't have to move, you bring compute to it. So you're seeing new kinds of use cases. So I have to ask you on the use cases and examples for Carto AWS customers um, with spatial analytics, what are some of the examples on how your clients are using uh, cloud native spatial analytics or Carto? Yeah, so one, for example, that we've seen a lot uh, on, on the AWS ecosystem, obviously because of its reach and, and, and you know, its position, um, we work together with another service in the AWS ecosystem called Amazon Location. So that actually provides you access to maps and SDKs for navigation. So imagine that you are like a, a, a company like uh, that is delivering um, uh, food or any other goods in a city. Uh, you have like hundreds or thousands of drivers around the city moving, doing all these deliveries. And each of these uh, drivers, they are they have a, an app and they are collecting actively their location, their position, right? So you get all that data and then it gets stored on something like a Redshift uh, uh, data cluster or S3 as well. There's different architectures in there. But now you essentially have like a full log of the activity that is happening on the ground from your business. So what Carto does on top of that data is you connect your data into, into Carto, and now you can do analysis, for example, for finding out where you should maybe place another distribution center you know, for, um, for optimizing your delivering uh, 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 routes. Or you know, like if you're on the, on, the, on the restaurant business where you might want to add a, a, a new dark kitchen, right? So all this type of analysis based on, since I know where you're doing your operations, I can post analyze the data and then provide you a different way that you can think about serving and solving uh, your operation. So that's an example of a great use case that we're seeing right now. So talk to me about, talk to me about the traditional BI tools out there because yep. you mentioned earlier they lack the specific capabilities. You guys bring that to the table. What about the scalability limitations? Can you talk about where that is, is there limitations there? Obviously, if they don't have the capabilities, they can't scale, that's one. But you know, as you start plugging into Redshift, scale and performance matters. What's the issue there? Can you unpack that a little bit real quick? Yeah, it's it goes back to the peculiarities of the spatial data, location data. Like the, in the use case, like I was describing, you very quickly are going to end up with really a lot of your like 
terabytes, if not petabytes of data very quickly, if you start aggregating all this data because it gets created by sensors. So volumes in our world, Kali tends to grow a lot. Now, so when you work with BI and with BI tools, um, there's two things that you have to take in consideration. BI tools are great for seeing things. Like for example, if all you wanna see is where your customers are, a BI tool is great. Seeing, you know, creating a map and seeing your customers, that's that's totally in the world of, of BI. But if you wanna understand why your customers are there or where else could they be, you're gonna need to perform what we call a spatial analysis. You're gonna have to create a spatial model. You're gonna have to, and for that BI tools will not give you that. That's one side. The other, it talks about the volumes that I was describing. Most of these BI tools can handle certain aggregations. Like for example, if you are reading, if you're connecting your, let's say 10 billion uh, data set to a BI tool, the BI tool will do some aggregations because you cannot display 10,000 rows on a BI tool. And that's okay, you get aggregations and that works. But when it comes to a map, you cannot aggregate the data on the map. You actually wanna see all the data on the map. And that's what Carto provides you. It allows you to make maps that sees all the data, not just aggregated by county or aggregated by other kind of like area. You see all your data on the map. You know, what's interesting is that location-based service has been around for a long time. You know, when mobile started even hitting the scene, you saw it get better. Mashups, Google Maps, mm -hmm. all this Google API mashups, things like that. You know, developers are, are used to it, but they could never get to the promised land on the big data side because they just didn't have the compute. But now you add in geo fencing, geo information, you now have access to this new edge like data, right? So I have to ask you on the mobile side, um, are you guys working with any 5G or edge providers? Because I can almost imagine that the spatial equation gets com more complicated and more data full when you mm -hmm. start blowing out edge data like with 5G and you got more more things happening at the edge, it's only going to fill in more data points. Can you no, share so, how that use case is going with mobile, mobile carriers or 5G? Yeah, that's totally, yeah, it's, it's totally the case. Well, first, even before you're like, we are there, we actually helping a lot of tokos on, on actually planning the 5G deployment. Where do you place your antennas is a very, very important topic when you're like talking about 5G. Because you know, like 5G networks require a lot of density. There's a lot about like, okay, where do I start deploying my infrastructure to ensure the customers, you know, like me, you know, like have the best service in the places where I want to kind of like go first. Uh, so I- You mean like the have, RF maps? Like understanding how RF propagates? Well, that's one signal, but the other is like, imagine that your telco is more interested on, you know, like on, let's say on, on a certain kind of like consumer profile, like, you know, like young people, you know, that are, you know, using one type of service. Well, we know where these demographics Kind of leave. So you might want to start kind of like deploying your, your 5G in those areas, right? Versus if you go to more kind of like commercial and more kind of like residential areas, there might be other demographics. So, so there's one part around market analysis. Then the second part is once these 5G networks are in place, you're right. I mean, like one of the promises that these kind of like these new technologies give us is because um, the, the network is much smarter, you can have all these edge cases. There's much more location data, data that can be collected. So what we see now is a rise of on the amount of um, what we call telemetry that, for example, the IoT uh, space can make around location. And that's now enabled because of 5G. So I think 5G is going to be one of those trends that are going to make like more and more data coming uh, uh, into, um, I mean, more location data available for analysis. So how does that, I mean, this is a great conversation because you, everyone can realize they're at a stadium and they see the, four, the multiple bars, but they can't get bandwidth. So you've got a, got a backhaul problem or not enough signal. Everyone knows when they're driving their car, they know they can relate to the consumer side of it. So I get how the spatial data grows. What's the impact to Carta and specifically the cloud because if you have more data coming in, you need the actionable insights. So I can see the, the use case, oh, put the antenna here, that's an actionable business decision. More right. content, more revenue, more happy customers. But where else is the impact to you guys and the spatial piece of it? Yeah, well, I mean, like, there's many, many uh, uh, factors, right? So one of them, for example, on the on the telco, one of the things where we realize impact is that it, it gives the visibility to the operator, for example, around the quality of service. Like, okay, it's my are my customers getting the quality of services 
where I want, or like you said, like if there's now suddenly a concert, the quality of service in one particular area is dropping very fast. So the idea of like being able to now in real time kind of like uh, detect location issues, like I'm having an issue in this place, that means that then now I can act, I can drive a band there, put more capacity, et cetera, right? So I think the biggest impact that we are seeing, uh, we're going to see in the upcoming years, is that, you know, like more and more use cases going towards real time. So where, you know, like before it was like, well, now that it has happened, I'm going to analyze it. I'm going to look at, you know, like how I could do better next time towards a more of like an industry where hard to ourselves, we are embedded in more real time type of, you know, like uh, analytics where it's, Okay, if this happens, then do that, right? So it's going to be more personalized at the level that, like, in the code call like environment, it has to be part of a full call like pipeline, call like type of uh, uh, analysis that it's already programmatically prepared to act on real time. That's great, and it's a good segue. My next question: As more and more companies adopt cloud native analytics, what trends do you, are you seeing as a key to watch? Um, obviously you're seeing more developers coming on site, on, on the scene, open source is growing. What's the big cloud native analytics trends for Carto and geographic information? Yeah, so uh, I think you know, like the, uh, we, we were talking before the, uh, the cloud native now it's unstoppable. But one of the things that uh, we are seeing that it still needs to, to be developed and we are seeing now progress is around the standardization, for example, around around you know, like data uh, sets that are provided by different providers. What I mean with that is like you as an, as an organization, you're going to be responsible for your data lake that you create on your, on your cloud, right? On S3 or in, you know, like in, um, and then you're going to have a computing engine like Redshift and you're going to have all that set up. But then you're also going to have to think about like, okay, how do I ingest data from third party providers that are important for my analysis. So for example, Carto provides a lot of demographics, human mobility. We, we, we aggregate and we um, uh, clean up and prepare a lot of uh, spatial data so that we can enrich your business. So for us, how we deliver that into your cloud native solution is a very important factor. And, and we haven't seen yet enough standardization around that. And that's one of the things what we are pushing, you know, with the with the concept of geoparquet of you know, standardizing that body. That's one. Um, then there is another. This is more uh, what I like to say that you know we we are helping companies figure out their own geographies. What we mean by that is like most companies when they start thinking about like how they interact on on the space on the location, some of them will work like by zip codes, another by cities. They organize their operations based on a geography in a way, or what, or technically what we call a geographic support system. Well, nowadays, like the most advanced companies are defining their geographies in a continuous spectrum, in what we call global grid system or spatial indexes. That allows them to understand the business, not just as a set of regions, but as a continuous um, a space and that is now possible because of the technologies that we are introducing around spatial indexes at the cloud native infrastructure. And it provides us a great way to match data between sources and operate at the scale. To me, those two trends are going to be like very, very important on because of the capabilities that cloud native brings to our spatial industry. So it changes the operation. So it's data as ops, data as code is data ops. Like infrastructure as code means cloud DevOps. So I got to ask you, because that's cool. Spatial index is a whole nother way to think of it. Rather than, you go hyper local, super local, you get local zones for AWS and regions, things are getting down to the granularity levels. I see that. So I have to ask you, is, what does data as code mean to you? And what does it mean to Carto? Because you're kind of teasing it this new way because it's redefining the operations, the data operations, yep. data engineering. Yep. So data as code is real. What does that mean to you? No, I, I, I think it, it, we are already seeing it happening. To me and, and to Carto, what I would describe data as code is when, when an organization has moved from doing analysis after the fact, you know, like where they're like a post kind of like analysis in a way, to where they're actually kind of like putting analytics on their operational cycle. So then they need to really code it. They need to make those uh, these analysis, put them and insert them into the boot, into the architecture bus, if you want to say, of the organization. So if I get a customer and happens to be in this location, I'm going to trigger that, and then this is going to do that. Or if this happens, I need to open up 
And this is where if an organization is going to react in a more real time, and we know that organizations need to drive in that direction, the only way that they can make that happen is if they operationalize analytics on their daily operations. And that can only happen with uh, data as code. Yeah, and that's interesting. Look at uh, ML ops, AI ops, people talk about that. This is data. So in yeah. developers meets operations, that's, it. that's the cloud, data meets code. That's operations, that's data business. You got it. And add to that the spatial with Carto, and we got it. Yeah, because every data, every piece of data now is important and the spatial is key. Um, real quick before we close out, what is um, the index thing? Explain the benefit real quick of a spatial index. Yes, so um, so the spatial index is, uh, well, everybody can understand, you know, how we organize uh, societies politically, right? Our countries, you know, like you have like states and then you have like, uh, uh, you, know, like uh, you have like counties and, and you have all these different kinds, of what we call administrative boundaries, right? That's a way that we organize information too, right? A spatial index is when you divide the world, not in administrative boundaries, but you actually make a grid. Imagine that you just essentially make a grid of the world, right? And you make that grid so that in every cell, you can then split it into, let's say, for example, four more cells. So you now have like an, an organization, you, you can you split the world in a grid that you can have a multiple resolutions. Think like Google Maps, when you see the entire world, but you can zoom in and you end up seeing you know, like one particular place. So that's one thing. So what a spatial index is allows you is to technically put you know, like your location, not based on a latitude, on a coordinate, but actually on one grid place, on an index. And we use that then later to um, correlate let's say your data with someone else's data, because we can use what we call these spatial indexes to do joins very, very fast, and we can do a lot of operations with it. So it is a new way to do computing, spatial computing based on this type of indexes. But for more than, more than anything for an organization, what a spatial index allows is that you don't need to work on zip codes or in boundaries, on artificial boundaries. I mean, your customer doesn't change because you know it goes from this place to the road, to the other side of the road. It's the same place. It's an arbitrary location. It's a spatial index, break out all of that. You know, like you break with your zip codes, you break, and you essentially have a continuous geography that actually is a much closer look up to the reality. It's like the forest and the trees and the bark of the tree. You can see everything. <laughs> That's a good way of looking at it. Great to have you on. And in real quick closing, give a quick plug for the company. Um, summarize what you do, what you're looking to, how many people you got when you're hiring, what's the key goals for the company? Yeah, sure. So Carto is a company now, we're around 200 people. Our vision is that uh, space and analytics is something that every organization should do. So we really try to uh, uh, enable organizations with the best data and analysis around a spatial, and we do all that cloud native on top of your data warehouse. So what we are really in enabling these organizations is to take that cloud native approach that they're already embracing it, also to a spatial analysis. Javier Founder, Chief Strategy Officer Carto, great to have you on. Data as code, all data is real, all data has impact. Operational impact with data is the new big trend. Thanks for coming on and sharing the company story and all your key innovations, thank you. Thanks to you. Okay, this is the Startup Showcase Data as Code, season two, episode two of the ongoing series. Every episode will explore new topics and new exciting companies pioneering this next cloud wave of, wave of, of innovation. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.